That's a really interesting question because um, because we can we uh, see food as such a physical activity which maintains our our physical body. And if we don't have any food, the body will die, and and as a result of it, we will die. Or if we don't have the right food, we suffer from mal malnutrition. And all these things uh, have conditioned us to believe that food is a purely physical physical thing. But this is not the case. Um, I and many other people who have been astral traveling have made had experiences that food is prevalent on the astral plane because food is also a, um, a symbol, you know, it's a metaphor. Uh, very often when I have been on the astral level through out-of-body experience, food is used as a means to socialize, to bring people together. But also the other thing is senses, our senses on the astral level are heightened. Not only do we see better and hear better and smell better, touch better and feel more. We can see a much greater variety of colors, a much greater spectrum, whereas here our sense of visual senses are restricted to between 350 and, and 650 millimu, uh, which is the wavelength of the visible light. On the astral plane, our sense of vision is enhanced to a much greater degree. And that applies to all the other senses. And our sense of taste also is, is uh, enhanced. And then there's another thing. As I said right from the beginning, the best way to, to look at, at reality generally is seeing reality in terms of energy, okay? And energy packages. And so what we do if we help a person in this life and we confront, we uh, console them and uh, we give them actually a package of energy. Uh, if we say, if we comfort them, we give them a package of energy which is packaged on the astral plane in a positive emotional way. And so the energy is actually feeding uh, their astral body. Now, on the astral plane, we also create energy packages and they can have the various kinds of metaphors. They can be love, but they can also have the metaphor of food. So what we very often find that when we go on the astral plane, there's, uh, there are very rich gardens with fruit. And, um, and this fruit, uh, if we eat this fruit, we will find we are energized. Or if we go let's say we find a beautiful clear stream of water and we dive into the water, we feel energized, we will feel uh, a sense of refreshment, not just physical refreshment, but also spiritual refreshment. So, so I was very surprised when I found um, on one astral journey there were people lying on the roadside and they looked as if they were asleep. And when I asked what these people are doing, and then the person told me they are on drugs. And that really uh, threw me, because I thought, why would people on the astral plane take drugs? And then I found out much later that there are energies which can take, have a similar effect as they have here. They can take people onto a higher energy level. They connect them, because they are... Again, there are energy packets like like you would find an energy packet here in LSD, which which works on on the certain nervous nerve cells and takes people into into a higher state of consciousness. Now the thing is, at the base level of all reality is just that is consciousness. There are metaphors, which are packets of energy, of consciousness, which are configured in various ways. So people who, who for example, on the astral plane, who cook or who cater, you know, they're putting things into food, which is not just ingredients, you know, they're putting love into it. And the way the love shows is by the rich display of the food. And I've been on astral levels where there was uh, you know, people were catered, they had a very big uh, spread of all kinds of food that people could choose from. They were very, very beautifully displayed. 
And when I met my mother, she too uh, invited me to meet her friends, you know, and there was this beautiful spread of food. And very often I find people um, on the Astral Plane, they're food stores where they, where they give chocolates to people, you know, and all kinds of things. Or you can, for example, pick a flower. And if you see beautiful gardens and there's, there's a rich abundance of flowers, you, you pick a flower and you not just pick the flower, but you pick the energy of the flower, the love energy, you know, and this immediately sort of radiates onto you. And before you know, the flower you've just picked is replenished. It hasn't actually disappeared, but it's still there. If anything, the flower that is being replaced is even better because it has enriched you. And so this interchange of energies on the astral plane is, is very, very powerful and very profound. So so these, these metaphors of energies which are displayed in, in fruit gardens or in food or in flowers, in abundance, this becomes richer and richer the more, the higher uh, the level of consciousness rises. You, so you will find incredible paradisical garden because the world is brimming this positive energy, this love. And then if you, you can take this to any level you like, on even much higher level, you, you go through sceneries which are providing you with an abundance of love and joy and, um, and ext up to a point of ecstasy where you go through more and more abundant worlds full of uh, light and love, you know, and, and this is almost impossible to describe. So, so that's basically what I have to say about food. Food is basically a... Um, a metaphor of energy, a manifestation of energy that can have very uh, a number of different forms. You know, people give give each other tokens on the astral plane. That can be a beautiful flower or a gift, you know, or a bit of jewelry. I remember my wife when she lost a friend of hers. Um, she went to see her before before she died, and she was in a very very in a very bad state, in a state of fear, and my wife tried to help her, but she couldn't. Um, she couldn't actually do much with her because she was not receptive. And then a month later, uh, she said, "Oh, I had an incredible dream. My friend came to me, and she gave me a massive diamond. And when I took the diamond, I felt an incredible love from her. So this friend of hers." After being dead for a few months, she realized what she was, what uh, Julia was trying to give her, and she felt the full impact of it. And then she used the metaphor of a diamond and gave it to, to Julia in her dream. But it was not just a diamond; it was also a repayment in a term, in terms of a package of en positive love energy. And so this is how how we have to see how the astral level sort of uh, is configured for us, you know. Now that is a really interesting thing because uh, as we all know the astral, the astral level is divided into uh, the astral world is divided into energy uh, levels or vibrationary levels which are from dull to very fine and very high frequency energy. The slowest level of energy is also uh, a diminishing of light, so it is a dark level, a twilight zone. And the reason that is, is usually um, negative feelings create this, this world. Negative feelings, resentment, uh, all these sort of type of negative feelings which people carry around with them. And very often people go through life and they, they're neither on a positive nor on a negative level, they just plot along. They're not actually, the life is not punctuated with great... Uh, bursts of light and love and joy 
And so they're going through life, going to work, they're going into a routine, they're coming out of it again, and there are not much high points in it. There may be, but they're very often very temporary. So the the Earth-like astral level is very much a reflection of of our physical world, you know. It has got the same grayness, the same mundane uh, appearance. Uh, it has got the same uh, signs of decay as, as it has here. And people who go to the near-Earth level, they probably won't even recognize that they are on the astral level because everything looks very, very much the same as it does here. And, um, and so... Uh, People who, for example, have been sort of doing very mundane work, there is no reason for them to change their work and to do anything different. So people who have been working in an office, and I, I wrote a report some time ago where I visited uh, the astral world where people were working in offices. Now, the, the office work can be... On one hand, it can be real work. For example, they may actually be organizing something. They may be organizing an event. They may be organizing people. On the other hand, they may just be office people living in or working in offices, and then they just uh, socialize in these offices, you know, and, and do very little work because uh, there's really not much point in, in doing any work, you know. So basically the main place of them working in offices, they may be uh, shuffling around papers or they may be carrying things from one part of the office to another. They may even adopt or cre recreate a certain meaningful task. There may other people who invent these tasks, but this is a very strange way of actually carrying on what people are used to. So we find people who carry on with their jobs, they are taxi drivers, they are bus drivers, they are people who go on these buses and are traveling around on buses, because also people are not, very often people are not aware that there is a much easier way of transport. But because the energy is generally so low, they're depending on public transport, you know. For example, on this level, you don't see people flying. And I have, uh, I have tried to, uh, during out-of-body experiences, I've tried to show people, look, why don't you fly, you know? And they inevitably, the answer was, it's too much effort. You, they, they much rather walk. And it's to do with the energy. The moment uh, you want to fly on the lower astral levels, the, the only way you make it possible is to summon up some positive energy, and that lifts you literally up into the air. And, um, and this is what I, I observed, uh, that people are so used to their energy level, they find everything is a, is a big effort. In my book, Vistas of Infinity, I, I described a man who... Um, who had a boat and he was inviting the newcomers onto his boat and he gave gave them a tour of the uh, of the lake on the boat and and I spoke, I spoke to him he said every time he does a tour on his boat with the newcomers his boat improves it, his his boat is better before it was just a small boat now it had an upper deck and a lower deck and he said uh, and he now has also a music band playing. So every time he does this kind of service for the newcomers, it makes them feel good and shows them around, his life improves and his job improves. His boat becomes bigger and, and you know. And so people find they're carrying on with their job and their occupation. And, and for example, a taxi driver, for example, his his life will gradually improve because he does people a service. And the other thing is, of course, there's also the feeling, and I've discussed it also with Cyrus, Cyrus uh, when people, um, uh, for example, the, feel an obligation to feel grateful, very often they, they pay them with money. And the money is, is quite a funny thing. You wouldn't think that is... Uh, uh, need it and is not, but people accept the money as a token or as a as, as a metaphor of their gratitude. So on this on these lower levels, we still find we have money, and there are people in in pubs. They serve beer and they accept the person uh, when they pay for their beer. 
you know, they accept what the person is really trying to do is say thank you, so they take the money. And that's a very interesting thing. So very, very much so, we, on the lower earth, near earth dimension level, it's very, very much like it was before, so people won't, uh, won't notice uh, much of a difference, really. But the good thing is, of course, people who have craftspeople, who have been uh, builders or architects, they're very highly sought after because they can enrich other people's lives by helping them designing or building their house. And that sort of works, this sort of system of, of commerce works really well because it gradually uh, brings people forward. It, uh, it gets them out of their um, status and takes them into a higher level of, of consciousness after a while. Very often I could tell by the people I met on what kind of level I was on. You know, if I was on a very low dimensional level, the people looked terrible. You know, they looked uh, knackered, they looked haggard, they looked thin, or uh, they looked obese, or they looked worn out, or they looked crippled, you know. And I could say, I could see that these people their state of mind was just sort of putting them into a physical body which was the equivalent to to their state of mind. Now, on the other hand, um, somebody who has been uh, disadvantaged in life through uh, some um, problem, illness, uh, you know, has been disabled in some form or another, you know, they may have no trace of this. They may look absolutely radiant beauty because what I sort of always said the moment you die your inside world becomes your outside reality so if you have a very positive um, beautiful inner inner world and a radiant world and are positive are uh, compassionate and full of joy and uh, and love, then you are almost instantly transformed. And I could tell by meeting people on which level I was. So, so beauty, the, the more beautiful the people are I met, the higher the level they were, the more beautiful and radiant the surrounding was. You know, so there is a there is a consistency between the people who live on these levels and their environment. And people who are sort of, um, and I've seen people who are look, look almost like zombies. They look as if they are diseased, you know. And usually the environment is a is the appropriate environment. It's very dark. It's very shabby, you know. There's there's uh, litter, and uh, there's no vegetation. There are trees without leaves, and and things like that. And people live in in hovels rather than in beautiful houses. And so this, this, this inner energy sort of manifests in the person and also manifests in their surrounding. And also it, it liberates people. For example, as I said earlier, on the lower dimensional levels, <clears throat> you find it almost hard to even walk, you know, but uh, let alone flying. You can't fly because there just is not enough energy on a higher dimensional level, you can transport from one point to another in an instant, you know, and it wouldn't make any difference. Uh, and I found, the other thing I found, people on the lower level, let's say they're in a very negative environment, and they're trying to get out of it. They will find, they're trying to escape, they see some light in the distance on the horizon, they think, oh yes, all I have to do is walk and I'll get out of this place. They don't. They, they may walk for days and days and days and nothing changes. And before they know, they are exactly at the same place they were only uh, uh, you know, a short while ago. So unless a person's uh, state of mind changes, uh, nothing changes. And there was, a, in, in Business of Infinity, I gave the description of a person who came out of the very low level and he was uh, coached by somebody from a higher level to, to gradually get him out of this lower dimensional level.
No, we're not forced. We're not forced. We voluntarily reincarnate. But what prompts us to incarnate, reincarnate, are energies which we in our current life, in our current state of mind, have no uh, perception of. We can't, we can't see it. We can't see the energy. Now this energy, uh, this, these uh, reasons for our incarnation becomes apparent when we transcend from the lower astral level into a higher, into higher levels until we reach a state uh, into the mental levels. That is the state of the Akashic records. And the way I experience it myself, I was, uh, I was uh, reading in my bed one, one afternoon and I fell asleep and suddenly I became uh, conscious in, in my astral body, not my astral body, but in a much higher energy body. I suddenly had this incredible luminous light I was based in, I was fully awake and suddenly I, I was seeing myself in my totality. I was in a higher state of consciousness and what I saw was myself not as a human being, but I saw myself as millions of energy centers. And I could home in on any energy center. It was every energy center was myself. And some of these centers have had past lives. And some energy centers <clears throat> were problems which I hadn't addressed and I had, I had neglected. And some energy centers were uh, relationships this, which hadn't been fulfilled, which hadn't been addressed. So I could see some, some energy centers was me living on a completely different planet. So I could actually zoom into on any energy center. I get a total understanding of what that life was all about and what it left behind and how successful it was. So I could have spent an incredibly long time to, to visit all these parts, aspects of myself, which I had, which made up the totality of myself. So I then became very acutely aware of the dark bits of things which weren't resolved. Okay, and so what became clear then, there was a mechanism at work that would, the moment my attention was drawn to, to some of these energies, a mechanism set in which drew sort of other parts, other energies into alignment with that. And before I knew, I could see, ah, there's, there are possibilities, there are opportunities how I can solve these energies and, and reconcile it and create equilibrium and balance. And then if I, if I did it right, I would create on the astral level or any level, I would create a situation where I could balance this out. And, and that is a, that is the advantage when we transcend the astral level and go into the mental level. We, we have an overview of who we are, of what we are. Now, of course, there are energies which are not, which cannot be solved on the astral level or on the mental level. They can only be solved on the physical level. And if we draw these energies together and they find, uh, then we think, oh, what I need to do, I've got to find another body in order to meet this person, to, to balance out this wrong and to help this person and do this and do that. And then suddenly it becomes very attractive for us, very, very attractive to seek a physical body. And so we don't have to reincarnate, but we feel this, we feel convinced or compelled to, to do so, you know. So nobody is making us, nobody is forcing us, but there are subconscious streams of, of energies which, uh, which is like sort of an artificial intelligence. They, they pull strings and they, they balance things until we find, oh, that is the best way to deal with that. And that moves us forward. And also to finding a body has got enormous benefits for us because because in a physical body, we don't have any control. We are set into this world. We are conditioned. 
we are becoming subject of the world, of the will of other people. So we are put put into a, an environment which is really quite hostile. We can't control anything. And this, of course, generates an enormous amount of power in us to to make the best out of it, to generate energy. And then we can, um, we can deal with the world, we can uh, fulfill our dreams, we can, uh, or we can simply sort of level things out, you know. Um, there, there are as many opportunities as there are people in the world to deal with our incarnation, and we do it in in more or less successful way. Now, the best way to deal with be, us being here is to find our uh, point of origin while we are alive, you know, to find our unity consciousness, to make the connection again with where we came from. If we accomplish that in this life, if we uh, reach to this sort of this state of unity consciousness, then this will automatically balance out all the other energies. It's like um, um, a slipstream we create, you know, all the because the energy is so high that all the light which we generate filters out in all these dark knots which we have left behind, and we don't have to have to have a physical life again. We just shed, we just cast our light or let's say our enlightenment into all these areas and then we know that's it, that's done with. We don't, we are liberated. We are not part of this um, process anymore where we feel this inner compulsion to, to incarnate and things like that.